welcome to Love and Life's Journey. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Chantel, and today I have a Look for Less project that I am really excited to bring to you. Today's video is part of the Look for Less challenge put on by Yami at the Latina Next Door, and every month she has a co-host, and this month's co-host is Linda at FaithChick777. And I will put the links to both of their channels in the description box below so that you can check those out. I will also link the playlist to the May Look for Less challenge so that you can watch all of the videos of everyone who is playing along this month. So let's not wait any longer. Let's jump into this project. I think you're going to love it. This is my inspiration piece. It's from Overstock.com and it's $94 and way more than I would pay. So I'm going to try and recreate it using items from Dollar Tree and Walmart. I'm going to be using this little windmill garden decor piece from Dollar Tree. And I'll be using two packages of these bamboo skewers. And there are 12 in a package and these are the ones that are 32 inches long. These are from Dollar Tree as well. And I picked up two packages of these five gallon paint stir sticks from Walmart. And the last thing I'll be using is this sign from Dollar Tree that I picked up back around Valentine's Day. First I'm going to be creating the legs of my windmill and for this I'm going to be using these barbecue skewers and if you have larger dowels you could use these. I just didn't have them on hand so I'm making some thicker uh, legs for my windmill by gluing these together. So for each leg I will be using three skewers and I'm first going to use a little bit of hot glue in between two of the skewers just in a few places, three or four places, just to hold them together. Then I'm going to use some wood glue and just put a bead of that all along the, the skewers right in between, uh, just kind of in the, the seam between those two skewers. And then I'm going to place the third skewer on top of those. Then I'm going to wrap some rubber bands around these in about four places all along the skewers to hold them together while that wood glue dries. And you do want to be cautious when you're sliding these down the skewers because if your skewers have any rough spots or splinters, you will get them in your fingers. So I'm going to repeat this process until I have all four legs for my windmill. And so I will be using all 12 of the skewers in one of those packages. While the legs are drying, I am going to prep my sign. And so basically I'm going to take this apart and I'm using a heat gun to kind of loosen the glue on these. Now you do want to be careful because the hearts are galvanized metal. So whenever you do this with the galvanized pieces, they do get hot. So you want to be careful, but this will help loosen the glue and make it easier to get them off. And I'm going to save these little galvanized hearts for another project and it doesn't matter if the sign, the paper on the sign gets torn a little bit trying to get the glue off because we're going to cover that up anyway. Next I'm going to use a staple remover and if you haven't seen these types of staple removers before, these are amazing. I'll try to link one in the description box below, but they take staples out so much easier than those little claw things. So I'm just removing the staples that hold the ribbon on and I'm going to remove that. I will be covering these using these paint stir sticks, but I do need to prep these a little bit. So I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and just take off the glitter on this one sign and get this nice and smooth and just remove that so that the glue uh, would, will adhere to this really well. And I am using some wood glue for this. I'm just putting a generous amount on and then laying the paint stir sticks on this and three paint stir sticks fit perfectly on this sign which is why I decided to go with this and uh, I'm just 
lining it up with one end and they will hang over on one end and that's fine because once they're dry we're going to cut them off and then I will just place a really heavy book on this and let it dry then I'm going to do the basically the same thing with the other wood sign and I'm just using the sandpaper to smooth out kind of where that paper tore and, and just make it a nice smooth surface then I'll add the wood glue and add my paint stir sticks and put something heavy on that to hold it down while it dries as well And I did let these dry overnight as well as the skewers that I made for the legs. And here is what they look like. You can see the paint stir sticks hang way over the edge. But like I said, that's fine because we're going to cut them off. Now that the legs are dry, I'm going to remove all of the rubber bands. And again, being careful of splinters. Next I'm going to measure and mark at 24 inches from the flat side of each of the dowel legs and so uh, this is how long I want the legs to be and I'm going to cut off the end with the points and not use that. To cut these I am using a miter box and saw and I will put the link to this in the description box below. This is a great tool to have for uh, craft projects. If you have a table saw or a different kind of saw you can use that but I just find this is really nice to use for uh, smaller craft projects. So here I have my four legs and then uh, the four pieces that I cut off and I'm saving these for now because I wasn't sure if I was going to use them or not. Next I'm going to mark where I want to place the supports that are going to hold my shelves. So I have two of the legs sitting side by side and I am measuring up four inches on each one and marking that. And for the supports, I am going to be using some of these craft sticks. They're by Crafter Square, and I picked these up at Dollar Tree. I will be using a total of eight craft sticks. So it's really important to make sure the shelf is going to fit in between the legs. So I'm using that as the spacer so that I know how far apart the legs need to be. And then I will use some wood glue and a little bit of hot glue uh, to glue these uh, craft sticks in place. Uh, but before I do, I want to snip off the ends of the sticks, the rounded ends, because I don't want them to look like popsicle sticks or craft sticks. So I'm just using some wire cutters and snipping off the ends. And it's always a good idea to use uh, some eye protection when you're doing things like this because these little pieces can go flying. And to prove that point, I snipped one off and it flew all the way over here and I had these little jars and things, vases on the ground and it landed right inside that vase. So uh, they can definitely go flying quite a ways. So here I'm just putting a little dab of wood glue on and then I will put a little bit of hot glue to hold that on um, and then uh, just place it right along where I put those marks making sure that it's even and you want to make sure that it all looks square. Next I'm going to mark where I want to place my second shelf and so I am going to measure down 10 inches from the opposite end of where we just placed the uh, other craft sticks and mark on each leg uh, 10 inches down. Again I am placing the shelf in between so that I have that spacing correct. I'll add the wood glue and a little bit of hot glue and place another craft stick. Mm -hmm. 
Then I'm going to flip my piece over and I am going to place a craft stick on the opposite side basically in the same location and this is just going to make it more sturdy so I'm just doing the same process I didn't mark these out because I could just see where I needed to put them so again I'm adding the wood glue and hot glue and placing the craft stick on the opposite side so it's kind of sandwiching those legs in between the craft sticks Then I'm going to repeat this process so I have another identical piece and they go 4 inches up on the bottom, 10 inches down on the top and these two pieces are going to be the sides that go together to make the legs of my windmill. Then I'm going to take those two pieces and two additional skewers and I am going to spray paint them black and if you want to use chalk paint or acrylic paint to paint these you can do that. I just thought that spray paint would be faster so that's what I'm using. And don't forget to paint the ends of each of the legs. So I didn't show it, but I did use my miter box and saw to cut off the paint stir sticks where they hang over uh, the sign. And now I am measuring over four inches and I am going to cut down only one of my shelves. The other one will stay the length that it was, but this one I am going to cut at four inches. And I'm just going to take a piece of sandpaper and sand off any little splinters or rough edges. So here are the measurements of the shelves. The first one is just the length of that original sign, about 13 and a quarter inches. And the second one is about nine and three eighths inches. And that's just what was left after I cut off the four inch piece. So because I glued the paint stir sticks onto that sign that's kind of a press board from the Dollar Tree. Uh, I have kind of a, a weird looking edge. It's dark and light on the edge and I, I don't like the look of that. So I'm going to take some chalk paint in the color of ink. This is Waverly chalk paint that I got at Walmart and I'm going to very carefully paint the edges of my shelves. I want to leave the paint stir sticks the natural color. You could stain them or paint them if you want to, but I'm leaving mine natural so I'm being really careful not to get any paint on it. So I'm making sure I don't get paint on my fingers or on the table or anywhere where I might accidentally get it on those paint stir sticks. Then once the edges are all dry, I am going to paint the backs of these with the ink colored chalk paint. Uh, I think this will just give it a more finished store-bought look. Uh, I'm going for you know a higher end look, so I want to have everything finished off nicely. And so instead of just leaving that press board look on the bottom of the shelves, I'm painting it. So once all of the paint on all of the pieces is all dry, then it's time to start assembling this windmill shelf. And this is when it really starts coming to life. So the smaller four inch piece is what's going to go on the top. And I am placing it with the wood grain or the paint stir sticks facing up. And I am going to glue the tops of the legs to this and so the the four inch piece is going to kind of sit inside of the legs and the legs are going to glue to the outside corners of that top piece. 
and before I glue anything I kind of lay it all out and this is a little tricky it's kind of one of those things where you need six hands but uh, just work with it and you can get it taken care of so I place that top piece uh, in between the legs and then I'm going to lay my bottom shelf in there so I can see how far apart I need to spread the legs and at what angle they need to be before I glue them and you can see here what I'm doing I'm just getting everything laid out making sure that it's uh, looking how I want it to look before I glue these together and I am using Gorilla Glue Sticks in my hot glue gun so that it holds together a little bit better and uh, I didn't bother with the wood glue for this I, I just felt like it would be kind of messy so um, I like the hot glue because it holds a lot faster and with the Gorilla Glue it I think it will hold it just fine Once I have my shelves all glued in, then I'm going to take those uh, two skewers that I painted black and I am going to put some little crossbars on the back of my shelf and so I'm just measuring how long they need to be and I'm just going to cut them with some wire cutters. So instead of just making one X across the, the whole back, I am making two, one in each section. And they're not identical, uh, but I don't mind that, that they're uh, a little bit different in the way that they look. I think it just gives it a little bit more character. And again, I'm just using the hot glue gun. This is really easy to glue these in place. You just have to hold them until the glue starts to set. You could also glue some of these on the sides of the windmill, but I decided not to. I might go back and do it, but I don't know. I kind of like the way it looks. Next, with just a pair of pliers, I am going to remove the hanger from the back of this little windmill and also remove the bell. And I'm going to save both of those because I may use them for a different project some other time. And I'm going to be gluing this onto the back of my shelf at the top and so on the same side where I just put those little cross bars um, I'm going to glue this and I am going to use a combination of uh, this glue that I have called weld bond I think you could use E6000 just fine uh, I, I wasn't sure that the hot glue was going to stick to the the metal as well so I did use a combination of the hot glue with a stronger glue and then I used uh, the bottle of glue actually to prop up the end of the windmill just to hold it while that glue all kind of set up a little bit so once that glues dry it is finished and again here is the inspiration piece $94 and I made mine for five dollars plus my paint I am so pleased with this I think it looks great it's really fun to decorate with the farmhouse theme and so I am really loving it if you enjoyed this project and like this video please give it a thumbs up it really helps my channel to grow and don't forget to check out those links in the description box below uh, for Yami and Linda's channel and also the look for less playlist if you are coming over from the look for less playlist be sure to say hi in the comments and I'd love to have you hit that subscribe button and stick around for lots more DIY projects thank you so much for watching I hope you all have a blessed day